What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another predecessor video. Today we're going to be covering the patch notes for version 0.3.2. I am mostly just going to be covering the heroes in this uh, patch as there is quite a list of hero changes. Um, nothing too crazy and frankly a lot of the meta hasn't changed too drastically but I'll be discussing that vaguely as we go through the video. Uh, if you like it, hit that like button down below. Without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, uh, balance changes, matchmaking improvements, that's all good. It's kind of, it's going to be a bunch of gibberish to a lot of you, um, but basically it's just supposed to make matchmaking a little more even, although uh, matchmaking times might take a little bit longer. Uh, hero changes, scaling factor, um, basically make the early stages of the game a little bit more interesting. Um, it's going to be a little hard to see how this plays in, but, uh, overall just important to note that there's some, uh, scaling, uh, changes. All right, getting into the actual characters. Countess. Okay, they're looking to stop the tank Countess abuse. Understandable. Blood Tithe, Magical Lifesteal, per stack decreased. No, not really a big deal. Uh, Blade Siphon, uh, base healing per target, uh, decreased. And, uh, healing scaling increased. Honestly, this is going to outweigh the uh, changes up here, simply because they also buffed a lot of the uh, magical power items. So she's going to be dealing more damage anyway, and getting a good percentage off of that. So, realistically speaking, it's probably st still going to be really strong for her. Uh, Eventide, base damage decreased, whatever, barely. Uh, scaling increased, she's still the best mid laner right now. Um, Fang Mao is pretty good. You get some uh, changes to his ultimate ability. Generally speaking, we're looking at a physical power scaling decrease on his um, R. Execute physical power scaling decrease as well, uh, but the execute physical penetration scaling increased by 100%. So you can really see how they're moving away from the physical power and into the physical penetration. Uh, the Fey... Frankly, she was already a really good character, and she gets a buff here, so uh, general base health increased uh, by 30, and Bramble Patch Q scaling increased as well. Uh, she's a really good, really good character, just make sure you build Megacosm and you're good to go. Gideon. Uh, uh, Gideon has been able to ignore building too much mana early on, often opting instead into the higher build, uh, higher durability builds with a little trade-off. Uh, we're increasing his costs a bit on his main damage and mobility to incentivize a little more mana in this item, uh, in his item builds, or to force more careful play when utilizing the magical bruiser itemization. We're also increasing the scaling a bit, uh, like we've done with Faye, just to make sure she, uh, he can compete in the later stages of the game. Not a whole lot to say about this. Uh, basically, it's just trying to make him a bit more mana intensive. Uh, mana cost increase, mana cost increase, uh, scaling increase. Again, not a whole lot to say. He's still still a good mid-tier character. Um, Howitzer, the single target mage for some reason... Uh, as other heroes increasing his scaling to ensure he can keep up, great. Uh, scaling increased on his Q. That's his, uh, missile. Kalari is hurting after this patch, that's for sure. Um, attack speed decrease, uh, attack speed growth decrease. Fixed a bug, whatever. The attack speed is gonna hit her farming early game really hard. And as an assassin, you really want to be building for the early game. You want to scale as hard as possible. So the fact that they're slowing her down on her uh, starting clear is going to hurt her a lot. Uh, scaling also decreased on her crippling dagger. So, yeah, I mean, it's only 5%, but it's still going to be noticeable. Uh, very, like, D-tier kind of character right now. Uh, Lieutenant Bellica, good in the right hands. Uh, very much... Uh, dependent on who is operating her. Seismic Assault Q. Uh, scaling increased. Great. Cooldown decreased. Great. Love to see it. Um, this might actually get her a little more in line with the other characters and give you a little bit more um, uh, leniency on her Q. Void Drone. Still not great. Uh, scaling increased from 20% to 30% though. Woo! Uh, Void Bomb. Base damage increased, which is great. We always like a Void Bomb. Uh, you can, like, spam that ability, and you don't have to hit Seismic Assault first. Just spam right mouse button, and you're good to go. 
Uh, Murdoch. General, uh, health growth increased. Sure, he'll have a little bit more health in the late game. Really not a big deal, but it's some. Uh, Muriel, small mana buff uh, to help her when she maxes her Consecrated Ground. Uh, this also helps support Muriel stay relevant. Frankly, like, probably the worst support in the game. In fact, hands down the worst support in the game, especially after the buff we're about to talk about. Uh, so mana cost decrease, whatever. Not a big deal. You don't even notice it in the first, like, two, three stages of the ability. It's only at the end that you might actually notice something. Uh, Narbash. This guy is going so good now. Alright, let's talk about this. Narbash has a, been a touch offbeat with his Song of My People ability, and it has generally felt tough to invest into. With these changes, he should feel more comfortable maxing out his healing either first or second, as well as helping him sustain his stacks in the mid to late game when he can keep that ability rolling. General, base mana increase by a hundred. That's massive. Uh, mana growth decreased, eh, not a big deal. Base mana regen increased from 1 to 1.5, also great. Uh, Song of my people, that's the E. Mana drain per second changed uh, to just a set 20. So it'll be more in the early stages, but near the late stages of the game, you'll be doing, uh, you'll be able to keep it up longer than you otherwise would. Uh, healing per second increased uh, by quite a bit. Uh, from 5 to 9, that's almost double. That's absolutely nuts, especially in the early game. Uh, so this is going to be a really good heal, uh, and you'll be able to keep your ADC alive very easily in the uh, early game, especially with the mana drain change. Uh, and then beat drop stacks uh, per second increase from 1 to 2, also fantastic. Uh, right mouse button, mana cost increase, uh, that's pretty much just to keep it in line with the mana increase that he got, so really, not really going to be noticeable. Revenant, my current favorite ADC in the game, uh, he's got a lot of stuff to say here, so I'm going to skip over the... Uh, kind of update here, the, the the paragraph. Basically, they want his fourth hit uh, to feel more powerful and to give him a little bit more attack speed on his uh, primary fire. So general, base physical power decreased, uh, not by much. Uh, base attack timer decreased, uh, also not by much. Base attack timer reduction per level decreased, also not by much, but when you're looking at such small numbers, that is quite significant. Uh, Q, base damage decrease. Okay. Uh, that's not drastic, but it's definitely noticeable. Uh, scaling decreased, also noticeable. Uh, consecutive missile modifier increased, which is nice. Um, magical power scaling increased from 75% to 100%. So this is going to make uh, his... The weird build that you can try where you go magic power, that's going to be a little bit more viable. Not that I'd recommend it. Uh, range increase, great. Uh, cone angle decrease, which is nice. It'll feel a little bit more, uh, a little more predictable where you're firing it, and it's going to be easier to aim. Uh, right mouse button, hellfire rounds, that's your uh, reload and passives. Uh, base missing health damage decreased from 6 to 4%. That's probably a uh, Good idea. Uh, modified critical damage change uh, from that to that. You'll notice that it is higher in the early stages, uh, but it caps off at the same amount. But up until that very last level, it is uh, better overall. Uh, Scar, the E. Uh, bonus magical damage decreased, uh, added 10% magical power scaling. Again, that's going to be nice for the uh, magic power build that you can go with on Revenant. Uh, Richter, bumping down Richter's health just a smidge to compensate for the S-Factor changes that are now giving him more health in the early game. Base health decrease, not much to say. Severog, still a boring character, but hey, uh, health growth increased, uh, base physical armor increased, siphon base damage increased, uh, phantom rush uh, cooldown decrease. I want to talk about this for just a second here. Phantom Rush has a longer cooldown than Steel's Charge, and it is so much worse. Like, all he gets is the dash. Steel gets a dash, a knock-up, everything. His 
he gets to cancel like anyone else's freaking movement abilities. And uh, Severog's over here with this long cooldown. He even has a longer cooldown than Grux. So I don't know what they're what they're doing. Um, his E and his right mouse button are just frankly kind of boring abilities, uh, and nothing really works with his passive, which is kind of what they're trying to accentuate, but they uh, aren't doing that very well. All in all, still not a great character, and uh, yeah, Fire Blossom nerfs are rough for him too. Steel uh, gets a few damage nerfs, but I mean, he's still hands down the best offlaner in the game. Uh, shield Bash, that's the right mouse button, base damage decrease, uh, stun duration decrease uh, by 0.2 seconds, whoop de doo da uh, it's, I mean, it's nice, but it, they should really just take the stun off of it. Uh, range decrease, that's kind of nice, because I felt like it didn't match up with the animation sometimes. Uh, force Shield, base damage decreased from blah to blah, it's like halved. Um, again, still still OP. I think he really needs to see either some really high uh, damage nerfs, or he needs to lose a stun or something, because uh, right now he can destroy you before you can even have a chance to act, because you're just stunned the whole time. So, uh, that's kind of my take on the character nerfs. Um, while I'm talking, I will slowly scroll through the item nerfs as I close off this video. Uh, if you want to see me talk about any other future uh, patch notes, uh, let me know. Uh, you'll notice as I'm scrolling through the uh, items here, especially the magical ones, uh, all the uh, magical damage, or all the magical power is increasing. Well, most of it, anyway. Um, so there's actually actually some really good buffs to uh, mages here. They're really just trying to incentivize using uh, magic items instead of uh, going for the tanky mage builds that people are doing, especially tanky uh, countess. They really want to counter that. Um, but yeah, uh, you can read the things, you can pause and whatnot, but, uh, or you can go to the website yourself. Oh, that's another thing I want to talk about, I almost forgot. Uh, tower changes are kind of nice, uh, they're just going to make them feel a little more impactful, so more damage, uh, base damage increased, damage per level, uh, decreased, and then damage cap increased. They're just going to make them feel a little more powerful in the long run. Uh, they did that to both the outer, or to all the outer, inner, and inhibitors. Uh, and then some general bug fixes. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like button down below. If you didn't, let me know what I can do better down in the comment section. Without further ado, have a lovely rest of your day, morning, evening, afternoon, and night. Uh, bye bye